this is where I live in New York. I took this photograph from the roof of the building I live in. Like many Indians, I left home for the United States on a journey of fortune and adventure. While New York is an exhilarating city, there are a few things about my core that are clearly rooted elsewhere. On occasion, I experience a sentiment I've called nostalgia India. When this happens, I feel a certain wistfulness for the 80s and 90s in India, and I pick up the phone and call my sister. And we laugh and joke about the rich cultural idiosyncrasies that made up our lives coming of age in India. We look back fondly at Dark Room, the innocent game of hide and seek we would play in the dark when the current went off due to load shedding. Gold Spot, the zing thing. <laughs> Videocon washing machine, which I don't know if you guys remember this, washes, rinses, and even dries your clothes. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> The green Onida TV devil, whose low, uh, low-pitched, rasping voice would say, "Neighbors envy, owners pride." The little Doodarshan logo that would rotate on your black and white television screen, half apocalyptic and half melancholic. <laughs> Supandi's bizarre comb-over from Tinko. <laughs> Scenes of gore from Amarchitra Katha comics, and of course, my favorite, the safari suit. <laughs> this, in my mind, this is the low point of Indian men's fashion. <laughs> would I? Would I one day become a pot-bellied uncle in a safari suit? It's no exaggeration that the possibility recently made me run a marathon. At which point, I was called an entu cutlet by my close friends and family. <laughs> We'd look back fondly at eating mango dew at ice creams in summer, our round and reliable ambassador car, our Ambi, and of course my kinetic Honda, enabler of my youthful courtships and fun, fun rides to the streets of Bangalore. And of course, there were words like fatty, fatty, bumbleari, shame, shame, puppy, shame. Sorry, sorry. One played Puri and Mother Promise. <laughs> Now, it occurred to me one day that these words and phrases and cultural constructs that brought my sister and I so much joy needed to be captured and celebrated in, at one, in one place for posterity. And so, my, my good friend Arun and I, my chaddi buddy, uh, we teamed up and we um, we conducted a small experiment. We reached out to our friends around the world and we asked them to give us words and words and expressions. Just like these, that were most evocative of intriguing Indian lingo, and we were amazed by the response. In less than three days, we received about 200 well-written entries, a small but rich anthology of South Asian writing, funny and informative, and centered around words. What we were looking at was a bit of a cultural treasure trove. This gave me pause. A little bit of research revealed that the last attempt at capturing language and slang at a very large scale for this region was the Hobson Jobson. The Hobson Jobson was written by Henry Yule and Arthur Burnell. It was just focused on Anglo-Indian slang, and most strikingly, was written in 1886. So, for a region with over a billion people, for hundreds of with hundreds of dialects and languages and words intermingling in such beautiful and rich ways, all we had to show was a little book written by two Englishmen over 125 years ago. Now, there have been some experiments since then, but in our opinion, they've all been remarkably reminiscent of colony and conquest and an attempt to study the natives. And so my chaddi buddy Arun and I, we got a team together. This is Braxton and Arvind on our rooftop in a tension standardized position, and we launched the Mosopedia, the definitive guide to South Asian lingo. We called it the Mosopedia because, on one hand, we wanted it to capture the gravitas and comprehensiveness of those 14-volume Britannica encyclopedias that adorn many an Indian living room, <laughs> but on the other hand. We wanted it to capture the kind of joy, irreverence, and playfulness associated with bunking class and eating hot samosas on a wet monsoon day uh, in a college canteen somewhere in India. South Asia, because we felt that our linguistic heritage transcended our national boundaries. We wanted Indians and Pakistanis on the site. Samosapedia is built by the people, the cultural cartographers of this century who wake up every morning and build our region's shared encyclopedia are in this room. In IIT campuses, in the bustling cities of Bangalore and Mumbai, and in expatriate settlements in places like Trinidad, Uganda, Kenya,、uh, Australia, and England, and they have given us thousands and thousands of words. Now, while the inspiration for this site came from my own, from my need to connect with the past, to connect with the with the, with the memories of my childhood, the site is as much about the past as it is about the present. The Lokpal Bill gets dubbed the Jokpal Bill on the site. When famous rapper Akon showed up in India to make Chamak Chalu, and when he asked his co-producers what Chamak Chalu meant, his co-producers looked at him vaguely. But someone on Samosapedia defined Chamak Chalu clearly. And then we have words like Aadhar that stand for foundation and represent one of the most ambitious projects to date to give every Indian a unique identification. And of course, when the entire country 
was transfixed and mystified by this epidemic. <laughs> Kolaveri, why this Kolaveri? Kolaveri Deeb and Soup Boys were all clearly defined on the site. Now, there's nothing innovative about Samosapedia. It would be hubristic to suggest that any of the core ingredients of the site were not in existence before us. However, what is interesting is what the site represents and what it says about where we are in our cultural evolution. You see, I went to school at St. Joseph's, a school that was built during British times, where the triumph of English as the ticket to a good life was celebrated every day. And we looked down upon our vernies, a term on Samosapedia that refers to those who spoke their vernacular. And I failed Canada for six years in a row. However, things are dramatically different now. What Samosapedia stands for is, is the sense of pride and the celebration of the distinct tongues of our vernies that merge to form a Hindi, Kannada, Urdu, Telugu, English patois that is uniquely and authentically ours. What Samosapedia stands for is this new South Asian identity that is brimming with confidence, that is self-aware and self-actualized, and most importantly, one that can look at itself and laugh. Because laughing at yourself, we believe, is the truest sign of social and cultural progress. Working on this project is like having the same conversation I used to have with my sister, except now with thousands, if not millions of people, just like the two of us. Thank you.